you vloggers out there that are vlogging BSA and pushing and pushing and saying well they're built to a price they're built to a price don't you dare normalize ship build quality don't you dare listen to it go Say it should crack a ton easy this no problem hey everybody bit of old school vloggage for you here it's been a while huh it's always been a while i fucking hate those vloggers that go i'm back i'm back like you missed them because you didn't they're just filling a gap i'm back have you missed me <laughs> no <laughs> Oh well, I've been so busy! Yeah, well, that, you've neglected us, is what you've done. <laughs> I think I did a video on that before, for any of you long-termers that have uh, watched my videos. But something you'll notice about me is I don't monetize, or haven't monetized my channel, even though that YouTube's going, you can do it, you can do it, if you be and cue it! I just haven't monetized it because I do it for the pure enjoyment and I really ought to up my game and I'm like on the cusp of doing it I mean businesses are doing great that's good so it gives me a little bit of chance to do some vlogging and, and bike stuff and something I'm really keen on is the fact that my videos uh, showing like this is the Ducati monster that slept for a decade show you the truth of fixing up motorbikes yeah rather than like the fake staged version oh god I've stalled <laughs> I need to adjust the tick over it's my fault nearly thought I was on a BSA then stalling <laughs> you're so funny Alex well they're giving you a four-year warranty now are they not getting a four-year flipping warranty Which is good, and I like to think that I've contributed to their decision to do that, because otherwise they didn't give a crap. And you know that if you're an owner of uh, an early February 22 bike, is it 22, 23, whichever, if you're one of the, the first adopters, you would have noticed you've got a, like a 12 month warranty, the two year warranty. Now you get a two plus two, <laughs> which they say is a manufacturer's warranty, but who's underwriting it? because they have a lot of problems and there's a lot of nonsense on the internet I'm watching some bloke at the moment and he's going on about I don't know what he's going on about he, he dropped his BSA yeah and I just wanted to say oh my god you are not alone they it's you're, he's like oh I've I've dropped it on the tarmac and it must be the tires <laughs> <laughs> no no you'll drop it again mate and it'll happen again and it's just a little flaw and I noticed on the Mark II bikes, and I should have videoed it, I think I did, at Motorcycle Live, the modification that they've made to stop that from happening. And I'm not gonna say Mark II, we'll say Mark 1.1. So it's the bikes that have got all the revisions on them. And they are minor, but they are really, really good. Like the headlight lenses are different because they're fed up of them rolling off down the road. I mean, how old is this bike? This fucking headlight lens has been on it since it was new. It hasn't rolled off. And people are buying new bikes, stopping at junctions and seeing their, their lens rolling off and then it's smashing. But I'm not here to knock BSA. I think it's really, really good. But you, you vloggers out there that are vlogging BSA and pushing and pushing and saying, well, they're built to a price. They're built to a price. Don't you dare normalize ship build quality. Don't you dare. You wouldn't get that from other manufacturers, would you? No. You wouldn't accept it from you'd be shocked if that happened on a yamaha or a suzuki you'd go mental but because it's a bsa look how easy this overtakes <laughs> no effort because it's bsa you justify it and you're like well it's built to a price it's built to this it's built for that bollocks it should have it should have been sorted out wiring loom problems where it's been trapped in the headstock Come on, top end rebuilds, oil problem, low, low pressure, which then seizes the bike, gearbox issues, come on. Do not fool yourselves because they have declined warranty. 
they've declined warranty and I have helped numerous owners. This is the fucking wankiness of, of you vloggers. I have helped so many owners achieve warranty which has been denied by their dealer, denied by Lucas Distribution and I have assisted them in getting their warranty through by proving that they are not the only person suffering from this problem. And there you are making sly videos going Alex has got an, alter, uh, an ulterior motive for slagging off BSA. Don't be a cunt. I got so many fucking emails in my inbox saying thank you, thank you, they've got it fixed for me. Without you, it wouldn't have happened. Dealers were like 175, yeah, for the lens and the ring, 175. Because the dealers were denying warranty, because Lucas Distribution was denying warranty. It's like I can always tell a non-trade person because they go, BSA, I talked to B, you didn't talk to BSA. My dealer talked to BSA. They did not talk to BSA. They talked to Lucas Distribution. They are not BSA. Nobody talks to BSA apart from Lucas. And that's the truth. Not even their social media is BSA. It's all, it's all outsourced. BSA get most of their uh, feedback from the dealers and the YouTube videos that you, you lackeys are making going, those bikes are amazing. <laughs> I bought the cheapest BSA. Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Look, the brakes work. That's okay. Do you know that video? Dude, man up. It's a great bike. I'm glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> anyway, what's important is that you're enjoying your motorbikes. And my video on that BSA Gold Star has gone some way to making BSA improve because the amount of feedback it's got, and it's gone a hell of a long way to getting people their warranty. I'm a huge advocate for motorcycling. I think it's brilliant. It's one of the best things that you can do in life is ride a motorcycle. I'm just so keen on the culture around motorcycles. I don't want to uh, join a club or anything like that. I just, I love riding. I love the culture. I love the people. It's very cool. And there's a bike for all of us, yeah? There's going to be plenty of you that go, I don't want to do Ducati. And that's fine. You don't have to have a Ducati. You, you can buy whatever you like. Ride whatever you like. I have a huge respect for the 125 community. Wow. These, these guys and girls are riding some pretty cool bikes. Yeah, some of them are Chinese, but they're figuring things out. They're like figuring out what the faults are and putting YouTube videos up about it and then fixing the faults. Just brilliant. Absolutely love that. And that's part of why this series has taken so long to produce. And it's taken so long to produce because I've showed you how difficult it is, how the, none of it is staged, how we've just got to work each problem on its own merits and figure it out together. And everyone's got an opinion, which is fine. But who could have guessed that this motorcycle had a carb setup similar to a TDM 850? Is that right? T TDM. It was a it was a Yamaha 850. What in the? Why would anyone do that? But somebody did. There's a video of this motorcycle running maybe 15 years ago. You can tell because it's registration numbers in the video, and it runs so well. And then something happened to it, all right? Something happened to it, and then it ran like a bag of crap. Don't overtake the tractor. Thank you. Beautiful scenery here. I do love Dartmoor. I was gonna nip off for a quick uh, copper in Widdicombe, but I just got a message and head towards Exeter now. No motorcycle work is easy, especially on an analog bike like this. They don't talk to you. There's no diagnostics on a bike like this. So you've got to figure everything out. Use your intuition, use your eyes, smell things, taste them if you have to, to work it through. There's so many stupid comments on the video as well, like, <laughs> you've over tightened the belt. It's just nonsensical shit. <laughs> and that's going to snap. You've over tightened the plugs. Okay, <laughs> I really don't think so, but all right. <laughs> so yeah, who would put a Yamaha K1000 
kit inside of the carbs for a Ducati. Who would do that? And then not put it back. Yeah, not, what, what story must have happened to have created that as an issue? I'm gonna open my visor, so my visor's getting all steamed up. How could that be a problem? And then this bike was sold on, and then it was shot, it was, what I can tell you is that the uh, tick over circuits was all Ducati and everything else was set for Yamaha. Even the needles, they were Yamaha needles. And I go through life, I'll take everything apart, I'll set everything up, but I assume that you haven't gone and put Yamaha parts in a Ducati. <laughs> so yeah, same, same carbs, just set up very differently because the Yamaha is an inline twin. And the Ducati is a V-twin, obviously. L-twin, call it what you like. She's running like a champ now, she's all Ducati-fied. I just love riding a monster. There's something about a monster, something visceral. This bike is really, really fast. And so although I'm pottering around for you in this video, she's properly quick. <laughs> and, and I heard that if you took it on a racetrack or a private road, it would do well over 100 mile an hour really, really quickly is what I've been told. I've yet to obviously put that into practice myself. It's just, yeah. But it's been a really, really exciting thing to do, working on this Ducati, and I've showed you all the truth. I showed you it being returned to its owner. I showed you me picking it up and trying to diagnose what's going on, and none of us could have gone, ah, yeah, we've put, gone and rebuilt the carbs of Yamaha components. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still flabbergasted now. <laughs> <laughs> what is important is that she's a runner and she's well behaved and she goes right through the rev range and gears are lovely and ah, that carb warming system's fucked off <laughs> that was such a shit system and he'll tell you different he'll tell you that it's absolutely fucking brilliant and that that's fine he can re reassemble it <laughs>